Hi, this is Steve with Double Reno Woodworking. So today I'm going to show you how to make a broken board. So this is all this is, is just simulating an old broken board that you'd find out on a barn, you know, barn wood or something like that. And uh, I'm going to show you a real easy way to make this cut out. And then I'm going to follow that up in the next video and we'll show you how to save that as a template. So once you go through all that work, you can use this outside design on any board you want to. So let's get into VCAR Pro and we'll get started. Okay, so here we are in VCAR Pro. And this will work in desktop or Aspire, any of those. And probably most all the older editions too. So we're starting out with a single-sided board. We're going to do a 16-inch by 7-inch board. And working in inches, we're working off the material surface. And we're going to center, use our center as a reference point uh, for design purposes. And then... Uh, Material settings, I guess we'll go with, stick with the mahogany. And go ahead and hit OK and make that board. So then the next thing we want to do, I made that a little bit bigger. My uh, work surface is a little bit bigger than what my board's going to be. So we're going to come inside one inch. So we started out with a 16 by 7. So we're going to have a 15 by 6 centered. Go ahead and create that triangle. So this is where we start doing all of our manipulation, okay? So go ahead and highlight your triangle, and you come over here to Node Editing. And then from there, we're going to add what we want to do. We want to basically break this top edge and this top edge up where we're going to have it where it's kind of crooked looking. So we're just going to add some nodes across here. So you just right click. Once you're in the Node Editing, you right click and hit Insert a Point. Let's go ahead and stick another one here. And when you see the little squiggly line there, that means you're allowed to, to insert a point. When you get close enough to a line, then you insert a point. As long as you got your snaps up here, it'll go right to your line. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. We'll do our bottom and top first. And then we'll come back and do our, uh, do our sides. Okay, so now we've got all those points where you're still in node editing mode here. You can just kind of take these points and move them around until you got a cool looking board. You don't want to get too close to your top. And let's go ahead and bring that in a little. So that, that should be fine. Okay, and you can you can play with these, do them however you want, however you want your board to look. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, so this is going to make our top board, our top and our bottom. So we stay in node editing mode, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to make three little breaks in the board. Over here, and then I'll make two over here. I've already played around with this some, so I'm going to go ahead and add a node here. So insert a point there. Insert a point here, and then you come back right in the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, but insert another point. And then you just take that middle point and drag it out to whatever you think looks cool. And as long as you stay in node editing mode, you can keep, see I'll move this one, I'll move this one in a little bit. And that'll kind of give me a different look too. So let's go ahead and add our other three on this side. Just want to show you kind of how you do that. So put two on the line and then go back somewhere in the middle and then add a third point and you can pull that out. Let's do one more down here. So we're going to insert two points. And exactly where you put these points and how you drag them out, that's just your own little creative process there. And then we're going to go back kind of in the middle over here and you can you can do this any way you want. This is just how I chose to do it, but you'll get the concept and then you can be creative and make your board look however you want to make make it look however you want to. Oops. I don't know what I did there. I think I put too many nodes in. Yeah, I put a fourth node in somehow. And we'll do one more right about here. So we put three points. And 
and we just drag our third point out. So now I'll come in and I'll do some of this. Maybe make that one go a little there. And sometimes it's hard to do with a mouse, so you can highlight it where it turns red, and then just use your arrow key. Sometimes that's a little easier to, to kind of move it around a little bit and look and see what your thing looks like. So I'm gonna take that one and move it in a little. Uh, that one I'm gonna move up and in. So this is just all whatever looks cool to you. Move that one down. And see, so you can close that gap a little too, you know, by moving it around. And then I'll take this one and move it in a little. That's too far of a gap there. Again, this is all just whatever looks cool to you, okay? That's a little too pointy. Okay, so now we can go auto, out of mode editing, and there's the basic shape of your, of your board, your outside of your board. So, let me make it dark again, so that's it. Okay, so now you're, when you're ready to cut, so now you got your outside of your board done, and, and all the other stuff, we'll add some stuff to this in a second, but I'm just gonna show you how I go about cutting it out. So you go over into the tool paths and then we're gonna do a profile tool path. And I've already got this set up. I got it set up for a 16th. So we're gonna do a, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because a quarter inch end mill is not gonna get down inside these corners good. So, but you don't wanna take all this meat out with a small end mill. So what? And, and there may be a way, if you know a way of doing it, setting two tools on a profile, I never could figure out how to do that. So I just set up two separate tool paths. So we got a, and for some reason this thing always defaults to uh, 13. So I'm gonna clear my tool paths. And I haven't actually ran this board yet. I'm just gonna say five passes, just to keep the machining time reasonable. So we're gonna do an outside cut. And then we're going to, come in and we're going to calculate that and then we'll preview it okay so that cuts it out but as you see we don't have our points in here because a quarter inch end mill couldn't get in there so what we're going to do we're going to close that and then we're going to run we're still in still have our uh, profile highlighted so we're going to come back on our tool pass and we're going to create another tool path with a 1 16th end mill. We don't need 47 passes. We're gonna say maybe, uh, let's see what seven does. Yeah, we'll just let it go with eight. And, and I'll, you'll have to figure out your tool paths and speeds and depths and all that, but I'm just looking to see what if it's a reasonable amount of time for doing this. So we're gonna go ahead and calculate that out and then preview, preview, and you double click to remove your cutout material. And there's our board. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, that's basically all there is to cut it, doing the outside cutout. I'm gonna go ahead and do some other things to it, uh, just to kind of show you what it, you know, what it can look like, but, before I do that, I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to save this file. I'll just call it broken board. So we'll call it broken board, save it. And now we're gonna do a save as, and we'll make a broken board too. So now my original one that I have made is saved as, saved as a broken board. 
because I'm going to do another video with this board. Because if you go through all the trouble of designing this outside board, you don't want to have to recreate that every time you want to make a board. You want to, may want to make multiple signs with this outside edge, with this outside profile. So the next video I'm going to do after this, we're going to create a template with that where you can do multiple signs and not have to recreate this every single time. So that's going to be my next video is going to be a template for this. Okay, so let's create some text in here. So we're just going to come in here and we'll type the word broken. Close that. Move it up here. Just move it out of the way and then we'll go ahead and create another text. Oops. Broken board. And we'll just move that one, sorry, we'll move that one down. And we'll center that horizontally right here. And we'll highlight this one and center it horizontally. And then we're going to take it and we're going to move these down a little bit. Because I'm going to make a pocket around these, so I'll show you a cool way to do that. Get them relatively close together. We want to make sure we don't get them too close like that right there. That's probably too close because we want to do that pocket with a quarter inch end mill. We don't want to have to run two tool paths. So we want to make sure we got enough room to get a quarter inch end mill in between all of those. So what we're going to do here now, we're going to highlight our text to make a pocket around this. We'll highlight both text. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to do an offset. And we're going to offset outwards a half an inch. And you don't want to create shop corners. You want to take that off. I'll show you. If you do sharp corners, now that still did okay. But I don't, I did that before and the sharp corners kind of messed me up. So we're going to do offset. We don't want sharp corners. So that gives us our offset, but we still got a few things in here in the middle. So we'll just highlight these and delete. So we deleted all that out. And we do not have enough room right here from the edge of our board to our pocket. So what we're going to do, we're just going to highlight, highlight all of this. And then we can just use our arrow key and drag it down where it's where our pocket is pretty much centered from here to here. From that edge to that edge, that's pretty well centered. Go one more click. Okay, so now we can come in here and we'll highlight all of this again. We'll go back, we can close that out. Go back over here to tool paths, and then we'll do a pocket tool path. Uh, and I've already got a pocket tool path set up with a one quarter and a one eighth inch end mill. The one eighth is needed to get inside of these, uh, inside of those letters. So we'll go ahead and calculate that out. And then we'll preview, we'll just go ahead and preview all tool paths. So now we got our broken board with some text on it and with a pocket. And I'm going to do one more thing real quick. I should still have all that highlighted. And this is one of the things I like doing. I just did a video on this. I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner if you want to see that. Uh, where I did on uh, putting a chamfer on there. And a chamfer, I really like the chamfer on my text and stuff. So, And it's really easy to do. You just go right here, click on the chamfer toolpath. Uh, we're going to start depth at zero. We're only going to come down uh, 0.05 of an inch, and that's just going to knock the edges off of these. It gives kind of a 3D look. When we start on the outside of our lines, like from here, and we're going to go upwards. So you want outside slope upwards. I have a whole video on this, and I'll put the link up there. Let's go ahead and calculate that out. And we'll do preview all tool paths. And there it is. So you got a, a broken board, you know, a simulated broken board and with your text in it and all that. So I'm going to do another video on this. Just going to show uh, how to save this as a template. That way you can use this outside edge design on any board that you want to use it over and over again. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. Please like, please subscribe, and please share my videos. Thank you.